we met with Carol Browner. The Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus began to stand so much stronger than we ever anticipated and remain grateful for. And the night before the vote, the information didn't get included, and Congressman Bobby Rush and members of the CBC and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus went to Waxman and Markey and said, we will not vote for a bill that does not include these provisions. And you may know the bill did not win by many votes, but in fact, it did include our two provisions. And why that's important, why that's important for you to know is because it was something we started at the end. It was something we didn't anticipate. And to be honest, I would have been happy if we'd won a quarter of one of them because it would have meant our strategy was right. And so as we prepare for the Senate bill, all of a sudden we became part of the cool crowd again, right? All of a sudden we got all these invitations to the secret meetings. And so people <laughs> began to invite us, right? And we made a really strategic decision to not participate. And the reason we made a strategic decision not to participate is because Green for All as an organization will only be effective to the extent that people believe we have power and that we're willing to leverage it. So my only job as the head of this organization is to build more power so we have the potential to be helpful and harmful. Because what people respond to is people who can be helpful and harmful to them. And so first, how can Green for All be helpful? The way we're gonna be helpful is we're gonna build power most of which is, is people think about politically and is regional in nature. So part of what we did is we looked across the country who were groups like Lane and Agenda and Georgia Stand Up and Atlanta and other groups across the country that were doing good work. And what we realized is we didn't need to do anything but provide information so they could do their good work on behalf of the green economy. Because we actually have to be able to point to green jobs and show they're real, because right now it's still a concept in people's head and we gotta assume someone's gonna call the question. And so the first thing we had to do is go figure out how to get the question called. So we spent a lot of time doing that. And I'm really thrilled because Vivian is here today who was the former ED of APEN who we convinced, recruited, and hired to lead some of that work. And so we said, who are the rock stars who know how to do regional work? And we organized a team geographically. Then we said, what did we learn from the climate fight? Well, we still want to have strong relationships with the environmental movement. Those aren't the people taking us to the dance. The people taking us to the dance are communities of color. So how do we talk to young people and, and communities of color? First, we have good partners like Energy Action Coalition. And also, we realize that we needed leaders in those communities. And so I'm so thrilled to see Jennifer here. We have a fellows program. And that fellows program is really about finding young people, smart people, thought people, and giving them uh, resources to go act on behalf of Green for All because we're not gonna get big enough to hire and know every person we want to, but if we can have hundreds of people across the country who are trained and connected to Green for All, we will have people acting on our behalf, doing things like singing songs at a convention about green jobs, and that's what we wanna be able to do. And so that's it. In addition, we just launched at the White House a Green the Block campaign. And Green the Block is a partnership with the Hip Hop Caucus. And what we realized is, I have to, you know, usually people are having exciting events, but our events are gonna be with Jay-Z, Kanye West, and other people this week. And the reason is, is because that's what people care about who we wanna mobilize. I stand with Van, let's go get Fox News. If, we're, if we all got Fox, and I love Huffington Post, I post there all the time, but I hate to tell you, most voters aren't up on Huffington Post trying to figure out what to do, because we've decided to have a boycott. <laughs>